and the council, or in the Thomas J. Smith Council Chambers. Would you all please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Kathleen, roll call, please. Wilson? Here. Davidson? Here. Fleming? McCampbell? Here. Scott? Here. Okay, we've got some proclamations. <clears throat> First one is for fire, fire Prevention Week. Whereas the City of Burlington is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living and visiting Burlington, Fire is a serious public safety concern, both locally and nationally, and homes are where people are at the greatest risk from fire. The United States Fire Departments responded to 369,500 home fires in 2014, according to the National Fire Protection Association. U.S. home fires resulted in 2,745 civilian deaths in 2014, representing the majority, that's 84%, of all U.S. fire deaths. Whereas in one-fifth of all homes with smoke alarms, the smoke alarms are not working. Three out of five home fire deaths result from fires in properties without smoke alarms or with no working smoking alarms. Working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying and reported home fires in half. Many Americans don't know how old the smoke alarms in their homes are or how often they need to be replaced. All smoke alarms should be replaced at least once every 10 years. The age of a smoke alarm can be determined by the date of its manufacture, which is marked on the back of the smoke alarm. Whereas Burlington firefighters are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries throughout, through prevention and protection education, Burlington residents are responsive to, to public education members and are able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, <clears throat> especially in their home. Whereas the 2016 Fire Prevention Week theme is don't wait, check the date, <coughs> replace smoke alarms every 10 years. Effectively serves to educate the public about the vital importance of replacing the smoke alarms in their homes every 10 years and determine the age of their smoke alarms by checking the date of manufacture on the back of the alarm. Now therefore we the City Council of City of Burlington, Iowa do proclaim October 9 through 15, 2016 as Fire Prevention Week throughout this city. We urge all people of the Burlington to find out how old the smoke alarms in their homes are, to replace them if they're more than 10 years old, and to participate in many public safety activities and efforts the Burlington Fire Department does during Fire Prevention Week 2016. Signed and sealed this third day of October 2016, Shane A. McCampbell, Mayor, and Fire Marshal Crooks is here have a few words to tell us about fire prevention. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mayor and City Council for the proclamation for Fire Prevention Week. Uh, fire Prevention Week is next week, starts Sunday, uh, October 9th. Um, as Mr. Davidson just read, uh, the theme for Fire Prevention Week this year is don't wait, check the date, replace your smoke alarms every 10 years. A lot of people don't realize that there is a lifespan on those detectors, and it's not that they won't work beyond 10 years, it's that the sensitivity to those smoke detectors aren't as great, and it may only be 50, 60, maybe even 70% effective uh, in, in letting you know early in the event of a fire in your house. Um, on average, seven people die every day across the United States in a home fire. Uh, adults 65 and, uh, years of age and over uh, are the highest risk. Um, there have been 31 fire deaths in the state of Iowa so far this year, and that includes the fire death in Keokuk from over this past weekend, which ties uh, the number of fire fatalities that we had in the state of Iowa for all of last year. And we still have three months of the year still to go. Um, roughly two-thirds of the home fire deaths happen in homes with no working smoke detectors, and the main reason for that is that they have no working batteries. Uh, and that is something that we come across on a great deal. We find the detectors, but we also find the detectors have had the batteries removed, and so they're, it's just like they aren't even there. 
Uh, cooking equipment is still the number one leading cause for residential fires. Um, that is across the United States and that holds true right here in Burlington. We respond more um, uh, home fires and as a result of, of cooking fires, people leaving their uh, kitchen uh, unattended when they have something on the stove. So I'd like to remind some, uh, the residents for the city of Burlington to do some things. Uh, this is the time of year we need to be looking out for these. Uh, number one is to check your smoke detectors. Make sure that you have some. If you do not have any working smoke detectors, please call the fire department. We'll be more than happy to come out. We'll install them for free. If you need a battery, we'll provide you with a battery. Um, we just received an email today from the state fire marshal's office and we're getting 185 more smoke detectors, uh, hopefully yet this week. Uh, so they'll be free to install into your home. Replace the smoke or replace the batteries in your smoke detectors. Um, it is that time of year where we just, uh, whether they need it or not, it's, it's just time to replace them. Um, sit down with your families and practice your escape plans. Um, planning ahead of time will result in, in much uh, faster uh, evacuation of your home. But, uh, and just, just take a look around, inspect your homes for general fire safety items, including clearing your exit paths. Uh, many times, uh, myself included, we have a tendency to uh, sit something down thinking we'll get to it later when in fact, um, later has come. It's time to, to move that along. One thing I would like to say, um, we are continuing our uh, fire prevention week in the, in the schools next week. We'll be starting with going out and doing the drills. We are doing our poster contest with the fourth grade class. Mm -hmm. Bickles, uh, Bickles Bicycles is donating another bicycle this year to our grand prize winner. There are seven elementary schools in the city of Burlington and uh, all seven will be participating in that. I'd also like to thank the Art Center for doing the judging for us for that poster contest. So again, thank you very much for the proclamation. Thank you, sir. I also have a proclamation. Whereas domestic violence, dating violence, and stalking affects women, children, and men of all racial, cultural, and economic backgrounds, causing long-term physical, psychological, and emotional harm. And whereas one in three Americans have witnessed an incident of domestic violence, children who experience domestic violence are at a higher <coughs> risk for failure in school, mental illness, substance abuse, suicide, <coughs> and may choose violence as a way to solve problems later in life. Domestic violence, <laughs> domestic violence rural, rural communities exist as a hidden silent and often unrecognized crime that is often un underreported. And whereas through the inspiration, courage, and persistence of victims of domestic violence, their children and advocates, our communities are learning to recognize the impact of violence in the home and intimate relationships. And whereas the Domestic Violence Intervention Program has worked to end violence in, in intimate relationships for more than 37 years, through the collaboration, partnerships of advocates, volunteers, local municipalities, criminal justice, health and human services, faith communities, business leaders, and private citizens. Our community's achievements should be commended. We must continue our commitment to respect and support victims of domestic violence and to prevent future violence in our community. Now, therefore, we, the city, Council of the City of Burlington, Iowa, hereby proclaim the month of October 2016 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month throughout the City of Burlington, Iowa, and urge our citizens to work together to eliminate domestic violence, dating violence, and stalking from our community. Signed and sealed this third day of October 2016, Shane A. McCampbell, Mayor. And we have My name is Christy Dozer. I'm the executive director of the Domestic Violence Intervention Program. And while we are somewhat new to the Burlington community, we've been serving uh, victims of domestic violence, dating violence, and stalking for more than 37 years. And what I will say is that um, Burlington 
and the larger Des Moines County have been tremendously welcoming. When the Attorney General's Office made the decision to restructure services in Iowa, that was a huge, huge challenge. And we were invited by the YWCA's Domestic Violence Program to apply for this area and, and really relied on, and we're very, very lucky to have them to champion us um, being here and more importantly to help the transition it was it was a tough thing for your community and we understand and appreciate that and want to know want you to know how much we appreciate um, your welcomes and the support that you give to victims of domestic violence it's absolutely critical i want to turn it over for just a couple minutes to crystal yatter she's one of our staff here in uh, des moines county and she's going to talk a little bit about what we do all right so i have to stand on my tippy toes here yeah turn that down a little bit for yourself okay. um, Hi, I'm Crystal Yatter, and um, our office here in Burlington is at 1616 Dill Street at Perkins Park. And there's three advocates that work in the office here in Burlington. Um, myself as the housing specialist, we have Allison Peterson, who is an advocate, and Brad Koenig, who is also an advocate. As far as um, the work that we do every day, it's different. We never know. I've learned to do my schedule in pencil because we never know from day to day what, you know, what phone call we're going to take and what we need to do. We wear many different hats in our job. Um, one thing we do is medical advocacy. So um, we might get a call from the hospital stating that there is a, a woman or a victim in the hospital that has been abused and that um, needs an advocate out there to kind of um, support them through that. We're, we're able to do that with them. Um, we can also do court advocacy. Um, if somebody um, is wanting to get an, a, a no contact order, we can come to the courthouse with them and, and go up to the third floor with them and um, help them request the paperwork and, and walk them through what the questions are and what they mean. We also can attend the court hearings with them if they so choose. Um, but more on a day-to-day -day basis, we, we do so much with our clients. I mean, it's everything from, you know, my, my main job is finding housing here in Burlington for, for my clients or in Des Moines County, um, which, which is a challenge sometimes. A lot of our clients a lot of times come with um, their own set of issues you know, domestic violence is also a lot of times associated with alcoholism or drug addiction. So those are all barriers that we try to work through um, with our clients. Um, not saying that all clients have those issues, but it's a reality that we do need to work through those issues at times. Um, you know, we're working on them trying to find employment, um, trying to further their education, you know, where they're going to get their groceries at next week, um, who, who's their network of supports. Um, so really, every day is a, is a different challenge um, for our victims, and um, you know we try to meet them head on, and you know we do whatever we can to to help them, and we're very driven to um, to their needs. We don't we don't meet the clients and um, tell them what we think they should do to better their lives. They know their situations better than we do. Um, honestly, we can't tell anybody else you know what we think we should do or what we think they should do. So we really sat down and listened to them, listened to what their needs are, what their wants are, what their fears are, what their concerns are. And then we sat down and, and we move forward in that and making a plan that we think could help um, benefit them. So with that being said, I'll turn it back over to Christy. We're really lucky to have some amazing staff uh, from Des Moines County and, and uh, being able to support. But, how I'd like to wrap up is I really like to try and, and connect this crime or connect domestic violence to people that I'm talking with because so many times we think of domestic violence as this kind of other thing. It happens to other people. It happens to um, somebody over there in that community. And, and the reality is, is that we know that one in three women are going to be battered in your lifetime. So that means that every person in this room knows somebody, whether it be a mother, a sister, a best friend, a neighbor, an aunt, somebody uh, in your life has been battered. And so the place that I always start, we're going to do a little visualization here. Think about the person who knows you better than anybody else in the world. Maybe your intimate partner, it may be your best friend, it may be a family member. But I want you to picture that person in your head. They know you inside and out. They know your strengths, they know your weaknesses. They know where you live, they have access to your home. They have access to your car. They have access to your money. They know where you are at any given moment. Maybe they know your colleagues if you're working. They know how to humiliate you. They know what scares you. And they know who you love more than your own life. What would it take to keep you safe 
from that one person that knows everything about you if they were inclined to use violence to get what they wanted. I think that's the thing that most people don't always think about with domestic violence. Individuals who batter their intimate partner, it's a criminal behavior. And as criminals go, they have more access, they have more knowledge, they have more leverage than most criminals of other crimes. What would it take to keep you safe from that one person that knows everything about you? In Des Moines County and primarily in um, Burlington, we served more than 300 individuals last year. Of those individuals, probably about 20% were children. And one of the things that Crystal alluded to is that we very much approach this from the perspective of this is an individual who's having something done to them. There isn't anything you can do in an intimate relationship that makes it okay for your partner to hit you. Violence is not a natural consequence to anything in an intimate relationship. And so we approach it from that perspective, that this is an individual that is being harmed and being harmed in the one place that they're supposed to be safe. And so as an adult, they know what they want, they know what they need. Getting there is always the challenge. Over the, and I'm not gonna date myself here, over the many <laughs> years that I've done this work, I've met thousands and thousands of individuals who they didn't want to end the relationship. This was somebody that they loved. They just wanted that person to stop hurting them. What would typically happen is that they would figure out over time that it wasn't going to stop. They would figure out over time that that person wasn't going to change and that they were going to continue to escalate. And then they would have to make an alternative decision. Unfortunately, what we also know is that on average, a batterer will stalk their intimate partner for two years after they leave. So when we ask that question, why do you stay? When we ask that question, why did you go back? Many times the answer to that is confusion, pain, hopes and desires for something that may or may not happen. And also, I need to figure out how to get through today. So maybe today I go back until I can get a few more resources together. Maybe today I go back so my partner won't kidnap my children and leave and I won't know where they're at. Maybe I'll go back because today that's all I can handle. I'm, we're happy to answer any questions, but we just wanted to take a few minutes to share kind of the philosophy of how we do what we do and why we approach things the way that we do. I think that domestic violence, that question of why does she stay is such an easy question to answer and our social environment has been taught to ask that question rather than to ask the question, why does somebody batter? So thank you. We want to say thank you again for all of your support. We truly, truly appreciate it. <clears throat> thank you for coming down. God bless you on your work. I'm thank sorry? You. God bless you on your work. Thank you. Thank, thank you. thank you very much. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. <clears throat>
Thank you for the opportunity to come and talk about City Day in the park and City Week in general. Um, it's been a wonderful experience for both of us. Ryan and I sit on the Pride Committee. You've probably heard a bit about of our work. Um, City Day in the park is the second annual opportunity for citizens to come and look at booths about every department in the city. So we're all here collaborating, letting you know, hey, we're here for you. These are our services, and let's connect. Do you have anything you want to talk to us about? Do you have any questions about our services? Do you know how the water gets cleaned? Do you know how long you can keep a library book? Do you know how the roads get paved? Let's chat about it. But it's also a lot of fun. We have our mayor come to City Day in the Park Week, and he plays games with us. There's face painting. There's bounce houses. Um, I don't get to do the bounce houses, but I get to do the games. It's a lot of fun. And then there'll be candy and then, let's see, what else? Candy, cotton candy, popcorn, soda. I'm thinking about the important things to me. Is there anything I'm missing, though? The sailing? So. Oh, so. yeah. there's a half mile race, too. So yeah. for adults and for kids. Yeah. So once you eat all that cotton candy, run it off. It's a lot, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. But you're yeah. focusing on fun things. <laughs> you well, lost this, me on that. See, I work for the city. I have for like 10 years. And I, it is a lot of fun, and it does a lot of good. But my favorite part is getting to connect with the citizens and kind of talk about what we do and connect and get ideas from them and, and serve together. I'm sorry. You just a, a, an additional note is, is it is great uh, to come together with the citizens, but it also I see um, relationships created and cultivated through the employees getting together and, yeah. and, and, and talking you know, when they, they wouldn't normally talk, getting to see each other. We're broken up so much, it's really hard to, to find a, a unified spot and, and talk. So it's, it's great to do that, too, um, with the employees. So, so thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, next, we have uh, two mayor's awards. Um, Four. I'm sorry. <coughs> so we have four mayor's awards. And actually, uh, I've seen one. I, I, I'm not sure if he's got to get out of here or not. But well, let me do last week's first. Um, this first gentleman, uh, he was recommended to me by somebody that uh, has got their ear to the ground. And uh, uh, we just have to recognize tonight uh, uh, Larry. So. Uh, be it known, on behalf of the city of Burlington, Iowa, I would like to thank you for being a model Burlingtonian. Your positive attitude, volunteerism, and commitment to families and children helped make Burlington a great place to live, work, and play. Uh, this was uh, given on September t uh, 19th, but we're going to give it to you tonight. Uh, this mayor's award is presented to Mr. Larry Durth. Would you please come on down? If I could, Mayor, I'd like to add, uh, Larry Durth's been involved with uh, Boy Scouting for a good number of years. As a matter of fact, it's... 40 years that he's been involved in, in scouting, uh, and he's uh, had uh, many, 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 many boys go uh, go through the programs with him. And Larry's a very humble, very humble man. He told me when I stopped by his house to tell him he was getting this award that uh, he uh, he doesn't like being recognized. So he, he may or may not have too much to say tonight, but he's a great guy, and, and uh, I appreciate him being a part of the community. I don't have much to say, but I like working with kids. They're fun. I like to work with them better than I do the adults. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> They're usually easier to control, and you can have a great time with them. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, this next gentleman, um, actually, I'll let you. I'll let you share with that. Uh, let you share something on that too before I read this. Uh, Chuck Siekman's going to be the next recipient. And Chuck came to me uh, three or four weeks ago and informed me that we had a uh, uh, one of the queens coming to town. The, uh, I don't know if it was a Mississippi queen or Delta queen, but at, at the time there was a boat coming, a lot of people coming, and he said that the the trees looked pretty bad in the first in the uh, between uh, Main Street and and uh, uh, Third Street on Jefferson. And he had always taken care of them in the past, and he wanted to know, he wanted to let me know that he was going to take care of them again, and he wanted to know if I could give him some assistance. I said no, I couldn't give him any assistance, but uh, I give him a big pat on the back for doing it. But Chuck has been doing this for years, and these trees were supposed to be in place for about 20 years. They've been there 30 years now, and uh, it's because of the efforts that he's made over the years to keep that that particular block of Jefferson Street uh, 
nice and neat and orderly and in, in keeping the, the growth that grows under the trees at bay. <clears throat> uh, I think if not, we, we'd have probably seen the city have to uh, uh, tear that area out and, and invest quite a bit of money in, in uh, uh, bringing it uh, to a different state. And uh, Chuck has, has been a volunteer for the community in many other ways. But this one is kind of goes unnoticed. Nobody nobody sees it. They just see that there's a mess one day and the mess is cleaned up the next. And it's it's because of Chuck and and a young man I believe that he uh, hires to help him do that. So Chuck, thank you, Mayor. Let's make it official. Be it known on behalf of the city of Burlington, Iowa, I would like to thank you for being a model Burlingtonian. Your commitment and passion for this community helped make Burlington a great place to live, work, and play. On September 19th, issued on the 3rd of October, this mayor's award is presented to Mr. Chuck Sigmund. expect to make a comment but I would like to say that I think Jefferson Street right now is looking better than it has in decades the planters which are being taken care of by Zeisers and um, made possible by one of the foundations I'm not sure it was Woody or the Murray Foundation uh, I love the Renaissance that's taking place in on Jefferson Street right now it's uh, due to the work that you folks have done and certainly some of the other people in the community that have made investments in the area. So thanks for everything that you've done. We're, things are looking up. It's looking up. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. All right. Uh, most, of the, uh, most of the mayor's awards that I've given out so far have been to, to old fogies. Uh, I've got another one coming up here. I'm just teasing, uh, but most of them have been older and uh, haven't been had too many kids. Uh, that uh, not that we don't have exceptional kids, but this is one that really stands out. Really excited to be giving this to you tonight. So, uh, what happened was just give you a quick uh, setup. Some people were doing some vandalism. They were vandalizing our stop signs. Can you imagine that right here in Burlington? That's what I said. And uh, <laughs> Jacob wasn't happy about it either. Stepped outside his house and he saw that that had been done. Wanted to do something about it and uh, tried to clean it all off. The, uh, I don't know if he got her completely clean, but he, he gave it a champion's try. And uh, when I grow up, I want to be just like you. <laughs> so uh, be it known on behalf of the city of Burlington, Iowa, I would like to thank you for being a model Burlingtonian. Your selflessness and commitment to this community and your neighborhood is admirable. People like you help make Burlington a great place to live, work, and play. On October 3rd, 2016, this Mayor's Award is presented to Mr. Jacob Cranston. Would you please come on down? Thank you. anything to say but thank you. All right. <laughs> thank you. There's a passage of scripture that says train up a child in the way that they should go when they get old they won't depart from it. You know uh, that's not a promise it's not a guarantee <laughs> but I'll tell you what it's uh, it pretty much always comes to fruition and you're doing a good job you're doing a real good job so keep it up glad to keep you in Burlington stay here we need you all right. Uh, this this last award, and then we'll we'll move right on. It goes to uh, I've known this guy ever since he was uh, ever since he was a little cat. His dad, who was here, the old guy sitting next to him, taught me the tire trade, and uh, 
Uh, I know, I owe, I hate to even give this credit away. I owe all the, all the knowledge. People still come and they suck me up. Hey, just talk me through this. I've got a, I've got an old little maker I need to change. Just talk me through it. There's no way that I'd be able to do that without your dad, uh, Jeff, who, and your mom, uh, Larry Joe, who is a fantastic person. Obviously, she's put up with Jeff. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, you're a winner. Always have been. You always have been. We're blessed to have you here, Burlington Police Department. Uh, you're a go-getter with uh, with a canine unit. All that you do with the help that you did to make uh, the Boots and Badges Day. Everybody was saying that behind your back, how much work you put into that. So. I hadn't forgotten. I was just going to milk it out and do it when I decided to. That's, that's the beauty of sitting behind this chair sometimes. I'm excited tonight to give this to you. Be it known on behalf of the city of Burlington, Iowa, I would like to thank you for being a model Burlingtonian. Your positive attitude and commitment to your job and community, as well as your desire to be an overachiever, help make Burlington a great place to live, work, and play. On October 3rd, 2016, this mayor's award is presented to Jeff and Larry Joe's kid. Ryan Smith, come on, come on down. one much for words but I do appreciate this um, I'm just gonna take the canine program and hit the around and run with it so hopefully make this community a little bit better you may thank you uh, thank you okay we're about to start our auction I will uh, let for those of you that want to get on out of here you can go on and get on out of here and we'll get started with the auction Okay, next on the agenda tonight is the consent agenda. All matters listed under item one, consent agenda having been discussed, are considered to be routine by the city council, will be enacted by one motion. There will be, <coughs> excuse me. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If a discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. On the consent tonight, we have the usual uh, finances miscellaneous, uh, uh, minutes and previous meetings, payroll and city claims, beer, liquor, wine, and cigarettes, reports, and bonds. We have three resolutions. <clears throat> the first resolution approving final acceptance, final payment, and release of retention monies for the 2016 Third and Washington Parking Deck Repair Project. The second is a resolution approving final acceptance, final payment, and release of retention monies for the 2015 Division Street HMA resurfacing project. And the third is resolution endorsing the Mason Road Trail Project. We also have uh, two public hearings set for October 17th. First is a consideration of sale of property, locally known as 2007, 2007, 207 South 5th Street, Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. And the second is a consideration of an ordinance creating Chapter 38, Tree Advisory Board of the Burlington Municipal Code. We also have an appointment, Mayor Pro Tem. Low Rent Housing Agency, Bill Palmer, Jr. All right, so we thank you on that. Is there anybody from the audience that would like to have any of these items removed from the consent? I see none. <coughs> Council? Good. We have a motion to approve all listed under item one consent agenda. Second. Moved and second. Kathleen. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Okay. Um, we've got two auctions tonight. This is uh, 
for the consideration of a sale of property locally known as 209 South Gunnison Street, Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. Um, publication's been made in the hot diet, Mr. Tislin. This is a property the city acquired through the banding building program um, and looking to sell tonight. Uh, for all of our, I guess, conditions of the sale, uh, similar to most of our sale of vacant homes, uh, defective items shall be repaired as needed. Licensed plumber and electrician shall inspect and sign off that such items in the property you meet or are brought up to code. Uh, sidewalks and parking areas shall be uh, meet current code standards as necessary. All permits shall be received and code shall be met for, applicable, for work as applicable uh, and occupancy of the home. Uh, the purchaser shall maintain the property and yard and hold insurance on such property upon approval of sale by the council uh, with work initiated within 60 days and completed within 180 days of approval within a 180 day extension uh, granted if progress is being made. Uh, deed shall be transferred to the purchaser upon substantial completion of renovation of the home. Uh, the home on at 209 Gunnison located between Smith and Division on the west side of Gunnison. Um, kind of a Brief summary of the home, uh, built in 1921, approximately a little over 1,000 square feet on the main floor, lots 45 by 156, off-street uh, potential parking from the alley, two bedrooms, one on the main floor, one full bath on the main floor, uh, possible additional bedrooms if uh, the home is remodeled, um, clean out, roof repairs, electrical HVAC is needed, plumbing repairs and wiring is needed, uh, windows, doors, uh, repairs as needed general updates. Uh, we get these homes in a condition where they are vacant, uh, so they do need to be rehabbed uh, prior to occupancy, and uh, that is expected of the purchaser, so. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this, uh, let's get this auction started. We don't, this is a property we don't have, we haven't taken any bids on this property. Uh, we'd like to start all minimum purchases off at $500 since we don't have any names or anything we're going to ask you uh, for your initial bid too please to uh, come and give your name and address uh, at the podium so uh, for the property uh, locally known as 209 South Gunnison Street we have a $500 bid so I'll say not everybody at once how you doing council my name is Arthur Gordon I live at 11464 Plank Road, Burlington, Iowa, and I'll put in a $500 offer. Can you give me that now? What was that address? 11464 Plank Road, Burlington, Iowa. What was that, a bit of 5000 <laughs> I still got to finish the other one. Oh, all right. <laughs> 500 Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, we've got a bit of 500 Got a bit of 500 Do I have a bit of 1000 a bit of 500? Do I? Do I see? Well, I tell you what, everybody's so excited, smiles and whatnot. Nobody's moving. Mrs. Vaughn? Oh, that, that's not your name anymore. Anybody? Do I have a bit of? A, do I have a bit of a uh, 600? Do I have a 600 dollars bid? Really? This fantastic property is going to go for 500 dollars. Do I have a 600 dollars bid? Going once. Tim Scott, 2016, South 15th, $600. That's what I'm talking about. What was your, what was your bid, Mr. Scott? $600. Uh, Mr. Scott's got a bid of $600. Mr. Gordon? Have a sent her a bid from eight for Mr. Scott? A thousand for uh, Mr. Gordon. Do I have 1100? 1100. 1100? 12? This is being televised, Art. Do I, do I, you got 1100. Do I, do I have 12? I got 12 for Mr. Gordon? 13. 13, Mr. Scott? 14, Mr. Gordon? 15. 15, Mr. Scott? 16, Mr. Gordon? It's like a tennis match, you know? 16, Mr. Gordon? I got 
16, Mr. Gordon, going once. 17. 17, Mr. Scott. 18, Mr. Gordon. 18, Mr. Gordon. 18, Mr. Gordon, going once. 18, Mr. Gordon, going twice. Sold to Mr. Gordon. What was that, 2,800? Man, that's a lovely property. I'm really surprised that it went so low. Uh, I think you're. I think you're writing. I think you're writing those down. Is Timmy doing those? You just stay down there, Mr. Scott. Don't worry about us. Oh, but first we need to close the hearing. I move to close the public hearing. Second. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. <laughs> okay, I right. move to approve the sale. Oh, you're going to do that in. Oh, we, need to do, so. we need to introduce a resolution first. That was correct. Yeah. Are you okay. going to do that or you want me to do that? I move that we approve the sale of property locally known as 209 South Gunnison Street, Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. Can I second? Second. Your Honor, I move to amend Exhibit C of resolution approving sale of property locally known as 209 South Gunnison Street, City of Burlington, Community Mine County, Iowa. The property to be sold to Arthur Gordon of uh, 11464 Plank Road of Burlington for $1,800. Second. second. Moved and second. Kathleen? This is on the motion this to amend. Right on. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Okay, now uh, let's vote as amended. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Could have saved some time just by starting off with 1800 just throwing that out there. But anyways, all right. Uh, this is, we've got one more property for sale tonight. Uh, this is, this is a time set for hearing for consideration of the sale of property locally known as 915 North Central Avenue, Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. Publication's been made in the Hawkeyes prescribed. Uh, Mr. Tisman. Uh, same conditions as uh, previous sale. Defective items shall be repaired as needed. Uh, sidewalks and parking shall be improved as necessary. Permits uh, and codes shall be met for work and occupancy of the home. Uh, purchaser shall maintain the property and hold insurance. Uh, again, work started within 60 days, completed within 180 uh, with extension uh, possible and quick claim deed transferred to the purchaser upon substantial completion of the home. Uh, I have a summary of this home as well. Again, one we acquired uh, through the abandoned uh, building program. Built in 1921, approximately 1,500 square feet main floor. Lot is 45 by 123 with off street parking from the alley. Has two bedrooms on the main floor with a large room upstairs that uh, could be a potential bedroom or uh, remodeled into possible two bedrooms and one full uh, main floor bath. Again, repairs as needed, uh, plumbing, electrical, wiring. Uh, roof repairs are needed on this home as well uh, with windows, flooring. Uh, and general updates and repairs uh, that are required by the purchaser of the home. All right. We did have one uh, bid submitted previously on this from Roger Thomas of 907 North Central, uh, adjacent property owner, for $500. Okay. We've got, uh, is Roger in the house? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, we've got a $500 minimum bid uh, from Roger Thomas. So I'm gonna ask if you have not put a bid on this, if it's your first time bidding, please uh, come to the podium, give us your name uh, and your address on your initial bid. And uh, then we'll just, we'll just take your, uh, we'll take a hand raise on that. So uh, opening the bid up now, this is for the property locally known as 915 North Central Avenue. Uh, bids open up at $500, do I have a, Tim Scott, 2017, South 15th, 5,000. Mr. 
We've got a bet of five thousand dollars. Do I have a bet of fifty-five hundred? Do I have fifty-five? Do I have fifty-one? Do I have fifty-one? Got a bit of five thousand? Got a bit of five thousand? Do I have a bit of fifty-one? Do I got a bit of fifty-one? Mr. Gordon at fifty-one. I've got a bit of fifty-one. Do I have fifty-two? I've got a bid at 51. Do I have 52? 51 for Mr. Gordon. 52. 51, 52 for Mr. Scott. I have 52 with Mr. Scott. Do I have 53? I have 52 with Mr. Scott. Do I have a 53? It's a fantastic property, y'all. You really don't want to miss out on this opportunity. I need to tell you. Do I have anybody else at 53? I've got Mr. Scott at 50, at 52. 52. Do I have a 53? Arthur does. Mr. Gordon, 53? 54. 54, Mr. Scott. 55, Mr. Gordon. 5,500, Mr. Gordon. Do I have a 56? 56. I've got 56 with Mr. Scott. 56 with Mr. Scott. Do I have a 57? 57 with Mr. Gordon. 58. 58 with Mr. Scott. 6 with Mr. Gordon. 65 with Mr. Scott. Somebody recognize the value. 60, 61. 71. 81. He's got 71 with Mr. Gordon. 72 with Mr. Scott. 73 with Mr. Gordon. 75 with Mr. Scott. 76 with Mr. Gordon. 76 with Mr. Gordon. 77, 77 <laughs> with Mr. Scott. 77 with Mr. Scott. These are a few hundred dollars we're talking about, people. 78 with Mr. Gordon. 78 with Mr. Gordon. 78 with Mr. Gordon. 8 with Mr. Scott. You came this far, you know, you might as well see what color her hair is. We got eight with Mr. Scott. Eight with Mr. Scott. 81 with Mr. Gordon. 81 with Mr. Gordon. 81 with Mr. Gordon going once. 81 with Mr. Gordon going twice. Sold to Mr. Gordon. $8,100. Mr. Scott, come on back up here. Well done. Thanks, Art. There are more ways than one. Do you got, are you reading that one, Tim? Yeah, we'll do it. Uh, okay. Uh, we got art at 8100. Uh, resolution approving sale of property locally known as 915. We, we need to close oh, the hearing motion first. Motion to close first. Second. Let's vote. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Your Honor, now motion uh, resolution approving the sale of property locally known as 915 North Central Avenue, Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. Your Honor, I have a motion to amend Exhibit C of the resolution approving the sale of property locally known as 915 North Central Avenue, City of Burlington, Des Moines County, uh, property being sold to Art Gordon of 20. One four. One four nine six four Plank Road. One one four. One one four. Six four. Six four. Plank Road. Burlington, Iowa, for in the amount of eighty one hundred dollars. Need a second? Can I get a second, please? Second. We'll vote on Definitely. the motion to amend. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott. Aye. Okay, and now can we vote as amended? Wilson? Aye. Davidson? 
Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. All right. Nice have it. Sold to Mr. Gordon. Okay, next uh, we have a consideration of an ordinance rezoning the property located at 3107 South 14th Street from R1 single family residential to R4 multifamily residential zoning district with conditions. Here's a second. Uh, yeah, this property we had a request uh, from the owner to rezone from to allow for duplex uh, condominium development on this property. Uh, it's currently zoned R1 single family. Uh, directly to the east is R4 multifamily residential. Uh, it is, uh, does have R1 to the north, uh, west, and south as well. Um, the conditions on this property. Uh, or as follows, land use allowed for the property shall be single family or two family duplex dwellings. A maximum of two structures shall be allowed on the lot, four total units maximum. Uh, under the R1 standard, only single family properties could be built on the lot. Under R4, um, multiple family uh, dwellings could be built on the lot uh, and multiple buildings can. The conditions restrict this down to uh, the same density as R1 standards, uh, 9,000 square feet per unit. Um, it's a 36,000 uh, square foot lot, so based on that and our zoning code for R1, it could have up to four units as an R1 zoning district, and uh, the conditions maintain that density for the lot. Uh, the Planning Commission held a public hearing on September 20th uh, regarding rezoning the property and voted 5-0 to zero to recommend approval of the requested rezoning. The approval was based on the surrounding use of land in the area, which includes single family, two family, and multifamily. Uh, the conditions of the rezoning that limit the use of land to compatible density and allowing the future, uh, following the future land use map designation as low density, resi low density residential, which includes single family and two family dwellings. Uh, they stated intention was to de develop two uh, duplex condominium structures similar to off of Pawnee, just to the north, uh, off of 14th Street. Um, Again, surrounding land uses, there's a three-plex townhouse directly across the street to the east and apartment buildings on Kessner Street uh, with primarily single family uh, in the rest of the neighborhood with some duplexes on Mohawk and off of Pawnee as well. So uh, they would like to construct two duplex structures similar to those that are currently on Pawnee at, at this location. Uh, questions or concerns? Anybody from the audience? I see none. Council? No. Okay. Your Honor, I move to close the public hearing. Second. Kathleen? Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Your Honor, I move for preliminary adoption of the first reading of an ordinance rezoning the property locally located at 3107 South 14th Street from R1 single family residential to R4 multifamily residential zoning district with conditions. Second. Move and second. Let's take it to vote, Kathleen. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Moving right along, number four. Uh, it's a consideration of an ordinance rezoning the property located at 2910 Madison Avenue from R1, single family residential, to C1, limited commercial zoning district with a planned unit development overlay zone. Mr. Tisla. Uh, this is a re again a request to rezone the property, the former uh, Klein Center, uh, located at the corner of Kessner and Madison Street from R1, uh, to C1, limited commercial with a planned unit development overlay. Uh, with the intention to develop the property um, as a hotel type use on the upper floors uh, office uh, and restaurant on the main floor of the building. Our zoning code requirements for uh, C1, C2, and R4 all have allowed different aspects of that, but they don't allow, all allow the same aspects. So the PUD overlay allows for um, specified uses within this uh, property. Um, wherein it restricts the uses to residential use categories, which includes uh, multifamily residential apartment type uses, also hotel or motel use, uh, commercial office uses, which is uh, somewhat self-explanatory, uh, medical clinics, um, doctor's offices, architects, uh, just 
insurance offices, general office type uses, as well as restaurant uses. So those are the three categories of uses that would be allowed within this uh, PUD uh, property. Uh, the Planning Commission had a public hearing on September 20th regarding the rezoning and voted 5-0 to zero to recommend approval of the requested rezoning. The recommendation was based on the condition that the future, future land use map is amended to neighborhood mixed use for the described property. Uh, based on the land uses allowed within the PUD, the limited reuse options for the property under its current R1 zoning designation, and the minimized impact on the surrounding neighborhood with the land uses allowed under the proposed zoning ordinance. Uh, they really tried to balance uh, what were appropriate uses for the area and redevelopment options for the property based on the applicant's desires, also with uh, concerns to uh, minimize the impact on the surrounding neighborhood as well, and they felt uh, this PUD, PUD ordinance and the land uses allowed would uh, do that. So um, again, the PUD primarily is there to state what land uses are allowed for the property, and uh, those were based off of what uh, was requested from the applicant, so. Okay. Anybody from the audience that has any uh, questions or concerns? I see none. Council? I'm just glad that we came to some sort of a understanding. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, can I get a motion to close? Move to close the public hearing. Second. Kathleen. <clears throat> Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. I move for preliminary adoption of the first ring of an ordinance rezoning the property located at 2910 Madison Avenue from R1 single family residential to C1 limited commercial zoning district with a planned unit development overlay zone. Second. Moved and second. Let's take the vote. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Okay. Uh, next, we have a consideration of an ordinance amending various sections of Chapter 154 Residential Code of the City of Burlington Municipal Code. Mr. Tesla. Uh, this is continuation of updates of our uh, building codes uh, for the City of Burlington. Uh, chapter 154 is the Residential Code. Uh, currently, uh, it cites the 2012 International Residential Code uh, as being the code adopted by the City of Burlington. So this. Uh, amendment brings it to the 2015 edition of the International Residential Code. And also uh, under sections repealed 154.02 uh, deletes chapters, uh, takes out the deletion of chapters 25, 6, 7, 29, 30, 31, and 32 uh, so that the residential code can be used as a, a one code book for uh, single family and two family dwellings uh, for electrical, plumbing, mechanical, and uh, general residential construction so that uh, developers as well as our inspectors don't have to bring multiple code books uh, for this type of development that it can all be referenced under one code book it contains all the requirements for uh, electrical plumbing mechanical in this book so uh, they felt this was the easiest way to utilize the book uh, for our own inspection but also for developers that are doing this type of construction they're not looking to find the requirements out of multiple code books it's just in one book so uh, so again, uh, going to the 20, 2015 edition of the International Residential Code with that one uh, minor addition or deletion from our city code section. Anybody from the audience questions or concerns? Okay, council. Move to close the public hearing. Second. Okay. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. I move for preliminary adoption of the first reading of an ordinance amending various sections of Chapter 154, Residential Code of the City of Burlington Municipal Code. Second. Thank you. Kathleen. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Okay. Next, we have a consideration of an ordinance submitting section 150.07, affixing numbers of the chapter 150 building <coughs> numbering of the City of Burlington Municipal Code. <coughs> Mr. Chislin. This is an update to our um, building numbering section of our code to be in line with our fire code standards for the dimensions of the building numberings on buildings, the four inch height and the half inch uh, stroke width. Um, this is in gearing up towards the uh, 
fire department looking to address the, the numbering issue or addressing issue throughout the community and want to be um, similar in our city code to what the fire international fire code states so that it's not confusing of interpretation or enforcement it's all the same uh, under both codes so this change brings our city code in line with the fire code standards anybody from the audience questions or concerns okay. your lovely audience tonight council I just want to comment how important this yeah. is yeah. the uh, We've had the police department out, or fire department out um, visiting with folks and uh, trying to encourage them to put their addresses on the side of their house where it's visible from the street. It's important for the police department, important for the fire department, important for the, uh, for the uh, uh, streets department and, and uh, uh, the trash department. They all require, uh, are required from time to time to go to your homes the only way they're going to know that they're there is if they see your your addresses on your on your uh, on your homes, and I know from the, being a business person that's in the service industry, I go to many many homes and I see that they don't have their their uh, numbers up, and it's uh, I know it's difficult for me, but in an emergency situation, it's got to be very concerning. So I. Uh, this, this simply changes from a three inch to a four inch uh, high uh, uh, numbering uh, system that you have to put on the side of your house now. But the important part is uh, get, your, get your numbers up. Um, I know out in the county, uh, since they, they implemented the uh, 911 program, it's, it's so simple to go out and find a home out in the county. Much easier than what it is a lot of times in town. And, uh, and a lot of people going through their minds saying, well, idiot, if it's 534 on one side, 536 on the other, then it must be 535 in the center. That's not always the case. We've got streets in this community where the numbers go from 513 to 517 to 521 and then back to 515. And, it's, and it, it happens on more than one street in the community. And why it's that way, I don't know, but it's, it did happen. So not, not all streets are or blocks of streets have numbers that are con consecutive. So uh, uh, please, for the uh, sake of your safety and, and uh, to uh, make it an advantage for, the, uh, for our uh, first responders, put your numbers up, please. That's all I had. OK. Get off my soapbox. Is the motion to close? Motion to close. Second. Kaplan. Wilson? Aye. Davison? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. I motion for pre preliminary adoption of the first reading of an ordinance, an ordinance amending section 150.07, affixing numbers of chapter 150, building numbering of the city of Burlington Municipal Code. Second. Second. Let's vote on it. Kathleen? Wilson? Aye. <clears throat> Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Motion for preliminary adoption of the second reading of an ordinance, an ordinance rezoning the property located on the west side of South Main Street between Maple Street and Spruce Street from M1 Light Industrial to C1 Limited Commercial Zoning District. Second. Uh, this again, uh, rezoning requested, initiated by the property at the corner of Angular and Main Street, uh, Transitions DMC looking to uh, put a homeless shelter in this property under the M1 zoning classification that does not allow residential. Uh, C1 does allow residential in the upper story or uh, back half of the property, which uh, meets their needs. Uh, looking at other properties in this area, C1 um, would be more appropriate zoning. Uh, so it, it eliminated some of the non-conforming uses on uh, Main Street. Um, after uh, bringing this forward, the property at the corner of Spruce and Main Street uh, came forward the realtor for the site and stated uh, they still had some interest in maintaining the M1 standards 
um, based on some interest in the property, potentially for uh, repair type business. Um, so uh, we would recommend uh, removing the bottom two, southern two properties uh, from the ordinance uh, and just maintaining the, the properties as shown in yellow on, on this map uh, <coughs> through this rezoning 2C1 limited commercial. Um, again, the Planning Commission voted 4-0 to, <coughs> to recommend approval of the rezoning uh, based on the future land use map and the current planned uses of the properties as commercial and residential. Anybody that have any, has any questions or comments from the audience? <coughs> I see none. Council? Good with it. Okay. Um, what, how yes. do we amend? Do we have to have an amendment or yeah. how do we do yes. this? Yeah. Um, motion to replace Exhibit A and Exhibit B of ordinance rezoning the property located on the west side of Ma South Main Street between Maple Street and Spruce Street. <laughs> from M1 light residential to C1 limited commercial zoning district by excluding lot numbers 158, <coughs> 159, and 160 in original city of Burlington, Des Moines County, Iowa. Second. Okay. On the amendment. Wilson. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Campbell. Aye. Scott. Aye. Okay, and as amended. Or no, oh, we have sorry. another okay. motion. Yeah. <coughs> uh, motion to amend to amend the motion for preliminary adoption of the second reading of an ordinance rezoning the property <coughs> located on the west side of South Main Street between Maple Street and Spruce Street from M1 Light Industrial to C1 Limited Commercial Zoning District to read as follows. For waiver of preliminary consideration and adoption of the second reading and for the final adoption of an ordinance rezoning the property located on the west side of South Main Street between Maple Street and Spruce Street from M1 Light Industrial to C1 Limited Commercial Zoning District. Second. And that's as amended. Yes. As amended. Ready? Yep. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. <coughs> Ayes have it. All right, now we're going to need to vote on the original motion as amended. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. All right. Aye, right, so. Okay. It's amended. Uh, we got a I have a resolution approving the final plat of the Roy Boggan subdivision. Target. This is a, a one-lot subdivision located in the uh, city's uh, two-mile subdivision review jurisdiction. Uh, so it is located in Des Moines County uh, within two miles of the city of Burlington. Um, this is creating one lot separating off um, the homestead from the remaining property. Uh, this uh, home on the property separating it off from the remaining farmland. Um, so again, one lot not creating it or not requiring any <coughs> utility extension at the site and um, meeting our minor subdivision classification. Uh, this county already approved this uh, subdivision, but uh, since it's in the two mile area, the city has to review and consider approval as well. So uh, this would be a, a minor subdivision and just requesting to split this one lot off from the remaining property. Is there anybody in the audience that has any issues, comments, or concerns? Seeing none. Council? No. Good. Let's vote on. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Well done. <clears throat> I have a resolution uh, approving agreement with Matson Marine Service Inc. for riverfront lease and mooring agreement. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a, we've had a, an agreement with Matson for, I don't know how many, how many years, but it's up for renewal. Um, 
terms are fairly comparable to what we've had in this in the past. Uh, it was written with five-year periods with, with renewals uh, the last time as well. Uh, you'll see the amounts that are in here for payments are comparable to what was here in the past. If you notice uh, through, throughout here, um, you've got wording in here that what we're providing them is granting mooring, docking, and warfage privileges to Madison. Uh, that's at parcels 1 and 1A. Uh, very similar with, with uh, parcel 2. Um, providing uh, mooring privileges at that location and then mo mooring pr privileges uh, adjacent to the southeast or channel side of parcel three. Um, the period of the agreement, it's <coughs> written here as a, a five-year agreement with two optional five-year renewals unless sooner terminated in accordance with the provisions. Um, the rent amounts are listed in there. Uh, for the first five years, the annual payment is $19,567, uh, which goes to $22,697 in the second five-year period. And then the subsequent or final five-year period contemplated in the agreement would be an annual payment of $26,328. Um, in addition, Matson's responsible for taxes, uh, license, and other fees that, are, that come due on the property. Um, Buildings on that site are Matson's. It's noted in there, um, in there to keep them par those parcels free from nuisance. And we've got a couple of issues that we need to address. With um, I think we've over time a couple of times had to deal with barges, and we have one that's there that we need to get addressed now. Um, we'd also note that the document has near the end in section 10 allows this. Uh, the city can terminate before the expiration of its term, uh, either at its sole discretion for a public purpose or for cause, and gives two different uh, procedures there. If we have a public purpose for any of these sites that uh, would require would require us to terminate the, the contract because we had another need for the property, we all we have to do is provide six months' notice. Uh, <coughs> so we'll do. Would that address a concern that the Riverfront Advisory I, Committee had? I think it does. I think it does. Um, okay. It allows, if, if there was something else that were to come up in, in any of those three areas, where we have a defined public purpose for the use of that site that would, would impair the ability to do this at the same time, yes, we can do that with, with a notice provision. They also have a six-month opt-out in, in item 11. Uh, they can terminate without cause with, with that same type of a six-month notice. So it, it, both parties have that same type of provision written into this agreement. Those are the basic terms that are included in here. Questions from the audience? Council? No, just I, I think that six-month... Um, the terms for six months for being able to, you know, terminate the contract is important, and I think that's something fair for the Riverfront Advisory Committee. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I, I was, I was prepared tonight to ask to amend to a, mm -hmm. a lesser term, but um, since Jim pointed that out and I hadn't read the entire contract, um, I'm comfortable with knowing that that's available because they're, they're con the, the Riverfront Advisory Board's concern was that we're going to be doing some uh, riverfront uh, protection, uh, the flood wall and, and the like, and they were uh, concerned that with that long lease if we needed to get into that property that it was going to uh, be an issue. But it's, uh, this obviously uh, eliminates that issue, so I'm good with it. Okay. Let's move on. Kathleen? Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Scott? Aye. Okay, good deal. Uh, we're at the end of our meeting. This time we will uh, entertain comments from the audience. have been such a wonderful audience. Is there anybody that has comments tonight?
My name is Don Harder. I live at 1018 Monticello Drive in Burlington. I'm going to give you something to look at before I start talking. A number of years ago, uh, the city of Burlington uh, implemented a, a policy of, re, uh, of removing junk or inoperable vehicles from backyards. I think it was an excellent idea. It was, for a while, pursued fairly vigorously. I think it did a tremendous amount of benefit to communities that have had a lot of vehicles sitting in their backyard. This came to my attention due to the fact that about four years ago, I purchased a property on Grove Street that had a problem with the next door neighbor that kind of had a uh, running junkyard in the backyard. Uh, I came down, this has been almost five years ago, and uh, tried to pursue some action through the nuisance abatement office to uh, have uh, some of those vehicles either cleaned up or made operable or at least to comply with the city codes in regard to having them covered and on hard surface and so on. Um, I would, to my joy, uh, last fall, uh, some of the items were removed from this property. Uh, I came back in March of this year and found uh, another vehicle that I just gave you a picture of uh, sitting in this backyard. This vehicle is totally inoperable. Uh, it looks that it's appeared uh, someone tried to drive around a telephone pole with it. Is that still here today? Yes, it here? is. Yes. Uh, I just came, uh, matter of fact, I just came by there on my way down here. It has not been tagged. There's no tags on the windows or anything indicating that it should be moved or anything. Uh, that vehicle has been there for now four months. I have come down on a regular basis almost every two weeks complaining about it to the nuisance abatement officials uh, and haven't really had a great deal of success, as you can see, because... Are, are you positive there's not a tag on it? I am positive. I walked right up to the vehicle tonight. Is it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, just simply to bolster my argument a little bit, I start driving around Burlington and looking, and I was totally aghast at how many vehicles are like this are in backyards and, and wherever in, in on people's property. I counted on one occasion on North Hill and on South Hill, within a two block area, I came up with seven to eight vehicles that had weeds growing around them. Some of them were up on cement blocks. Uh, they were just like this one. There's grass growing around it, et cetera, et cetera. I think it really deteriorates from the quality of life in Burlington, especially um, you know with the people that are owning the properties close to these that are trying to take good care of their properties. I try to take good care of my properties and I hope everyone else does. But uh, when we have something like this, I think it's really unfortunate. Now I know on your website, you still indicate the fact that you really want people to clean up these abandoned vehicles because I've read it or seen it on TV several times on your website. I know after talking to a couple of the councilmen, you were kind of surprised that that this was going on, and, and I think maybe not so surprised because you're probably around the community as much or more than I am. And I'd really like to see us take a, a, I shouldn't say an aggressive stance, but just a proactive stance in regard to seeing if we can't get some of these properties cleaned up, because I think it makes a tremendous amount of difference to the people that own the properties next door, to the neighborhoods. When you walk down or drive by a neighborhood and you see two or three vehicles sitting in the yard on cement blocks, grass growing up around them. Some of them have parts missing, body parts missing, and so on. I think it really detracts from the neighborhoods. So I'm just bringing this to your attention. I uh, did mention to the mayor in regard to this property, uh, it, is, it is still in the same condition it was in. Uh, I've been trying to uh, get some action on this for four, four months, and prior to that, for almost five years on this property, and it hasn't been very successful. So I just, uh, I don't know, I'd be willing to entertain any questions if you have them. Um, I'd be more than happy to give you the address of my property. You can drove by and see where this is, but I don't think I should really announce it on the TV, but uh, well, I I'd be willing to me, I know that. where it's at, I can tell them. But yeah. Do you guys have any questions for Mr. Hardy? Uh, thank you, Don. Okay. Did, Eric, did you get? report on that or 
Yeah, well, he had sent a letter, I think his note is, it was due last week. I asked him today, and he said he hadn't gotten by today. He'll get by first thing in the morning, and it'll be towed. So his deadline was last week. Okay. I, I had talked with uh, Lucens about it. He, uh, Eric was going to put something together for us. And apparently he's got somebody going by tomorrow morning, too. It, what what is the actual policy? In other words, if someone calls in in regard to a concern, I'm sure the ins I assume the inspectors go out and look at the property or look at the supposed problem. If there is a problem that's identified, what do they are they do they put a sticker on it, and then how long do they have to respond to that? Or I'm not sure. It, how you know, each, each one each situation is different, but Eric can probably explain it better. There's some that you know can get immediate response, and others it takes 30 days or 60 days. Or uh, you, I mean, we, we've got one that we're dealing with on the corner of Washington and Eighth Street. That um, the city attorney's involved, nuisance has been involved, uh, citations have been issued for trespass, um, uh, and it's uh, um, a, a unwillingness by the person that owns the property to. Uh, do anything and, and literally the city's done everything they can they can do to this point it's now in the in the hands of the courts and it's waiting for the courts to to uh, uh, settle the matter for us one way or the other and um, uh, and I, I'm not sure about this particular situation but that's what these guys deal with every day in the nuisance department is I know the police are very vigilant in regard to you know, if a property or if a vehicle is left on the side of the road, you know, they'd normally within 24 or 48 hours, I believe, have a tag on the window indicating that something has to be done to remedy the problem. Yeah, when, right. it's, when it's in the city right away, it's a little, a little easier to, to deal with. And it's it actually, the uh, police department can deal with it where if it's setting on private property, it's a nuisance department issue. So, and it's, and they they had just have different ways that they've got to got to handle it. I'm with you, Don. I, I'm I'm frustrated as hell that we have to put up with with this all over town. I, I, I was by a house the other day that had seven trailers, three of them parked in the in the city right away, and four of them parked in the in the back. There was I don't know where he parked his car. Um, he wasn't home at the time, but um, it's. I'm seeing it all over town, and it's. I don't. I don't know if we got enough manpower to deal with, with, uh, we don't. with all of it. Public uh, public education is about the only thing we can do, or, or take a really tough stance on it, and, and start hauling everything in sight. And, um, I don't know. It depends on what. The, I think the neighbors would appreciate a more aggressive stance. <laughs> I, I know I would. You know. I, I don't know if my. If you live right next would. door to these, you would. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank I, you. Thank you, John. Thanks for bringing thank it to our you. attention. Anyone else in the audience? Questions or concerns? Okay. Been a lovely audience tonight. Mr. Tislin. No. Uh, Councilwoman. Well, so Friday was the wine walk, and it was there was a lot going on. There were so many people there. I know that they had printed out, I think, 700 uh, maps and they were all gone so I don't know he had over 800 wow. yeah it was amazing oh so just well, what was you it missed called? out the sip taste and stroll I call it the one sip taste and stroll thank you very much thank you councilman I, I, I wanted to touch on that too I didn't get a chance I was working but all week long downtown has yes. been swamped yeah. I mean, there was uh, story there, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thur thur Thursday, um, they had a, a special event down at hopefully yours, and then the and then the um, uh, farmers market, and it, it was just packed. There were people everywhere. I mean, people parked clear up on Washington Street, clear up, but they were parked clear up by uh, uh, Martinis coming down to uh, Jefferson Street, and um, it just seems to be getting busier and busier and busier downtown every day, and. Uh, the uh, the new restaurant that's uh, in brewery that's opening on the tenth is just amazing. The uh, the inside is is just uh, 
just beautiful in there. They've done a, a fabulous job. I think that's going to bring a lot more traffic downtown too. So it's a it's it's a great place to be be almost all the time anymore. So that's all I had. Uh, the only thing I've got is uh, yeah, I was just going to say we had uh, the rivet cutting at the new gas station um, at uh, the new High V gas station, and it's. Uh, it's a new deal. You need to stop there and get some gas. Uh, I don't know if there's any other gas stations like that anywhere close by, but you can you can pick what flavor you want. You get gasoline with uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, you know, a little splash of vanilla. That's and uh, yeah, well, okay, my oh. fault. But you can get 85 or 15, or I, they've got it broke down. But uh, anyways, we're pretty excited about that with that partnership. And we also did have the uh, ribbon cutting uh, first new building down on Jefferson Street in over 40 years. Uh, which is hopefully yours. It is now uh, hopefully ours. And, uh, man, nobody got that joke down there either. <laughs> All right. You know, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead, which I have not, so I'll quit. Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> I see this note here. Two weeks from today starts the fall leaf collection. Am I correct on that? Huh? Sounds right. Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you, get, you get seven chances to put out your leaves. So part of the cleanup that we can do in our city. Please don't just rake your leaves into the street and let them lay there. Please. City manager, who we happen to love and appreciate dearly. All right. The, I was going to mention, Tim, the shop right over here, too. Um, I can't think of the restaurant's name right. Crafted? Actually, the Bistro? The Bistro. Crafted. They, yeah. they, uh, they're fairly busy, too, and it's just, it is neat to see the different activities with different places that have opened up. Um, I don't know, if, Nick, if you've given an update on the snow plows yet. No. Oh, this is fun. Originally, just a, we were trying to get something accomplished with Burlington High School, and yeah, uh, things things didn't, things didn't, didn't quite, quite mesh out. So. Uh, we were able to work something out with Great River Christian School in its place. That's a little too much. Oh, well, I think it adjusts. Okay. Yeah. So I uh, worked out three plows with Great River Christian School. You probably saw something maybe in the Hawkeye and on KBR. Yes. Um, yeah, I just dropped them off. They happened so quick that um, these guys did a fantastic job on it. Um, <coughs> I couldn't thank them enough for doing what they did. This, this next one I think is absolutely oh, awesome. Wow. Wow. I couldn't believe that, you know, elementary through high school kids worked on this. Elementary school kids worked yeah. on that Elementary one through high school. Yeah, they worked on so it. I'm going to work on trying to get some uh, clear coat, and one of my guys has a, has a gun, try and preserve that as long as possible. Because yes. once it gets into the snow, that paint will, it'll last a few snowstorms, but. How many get, total plows are getting done on this? We, we just deal? did three for this year. Um, okay. I had planned to do 13, but things with the high school didn't quite work out, so. Hopefully this turns into, this is a good product to show what, what can be done in the future and have an application process next year. Um, get, you know, get the other schools, Notre Dame, maybe even West Burlington if they'd like to, involved. Yeah. So I think it's uh, pretty cool. We're going to have this on display at City Week in the park that Saturday. And then I've also talked a couple of my guys into uh, entering it into the parade. So, oh, yeah. so I think that'll be a pretty neat little thing. Yeah, that is cool. They did a awesome. good job on that. I, I cannot, I, when I walked up and saw that, I could not believe how amazing it looked. Um, there's, they did a little extra stuff to it since then, but um, no, they look pretty awesome. I'm so glad we got something worked out for somebody to be able to put some artwork on there. Yeah, I, I couldn't have asked for a, you know, a, a nicer, nicer set of snow plows. Um, since I'm up here, uh, I also wanted to let you know that last week the the barriers for the hescos um for the flooding they went as about as smooth as you could go thank, thank you. you i'm glad you brought yes. that yeah. up um yeah, I, that. I i we had several volunteers down there and i don't know all their names right offhand but i'll get those to them get Good. to you Good. Uh, i couldn't you know they did a fantastic job last week and i think the key of it was that i stayed out of the way <laughs> and didn't, didn't, didn't tell them what to do so um no any of anything else for me no, just just want to throw out there again, just a big thank you to everybody that you get those names too, Nick. But yep, to everybody that worked so hard and uh, 
they they were hustling, no complaint. I mean, working great together. It was just uh, we got some great employees. We really do. I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. Yeah, they they had those barriers up in no time. I mean, they, they, I was amazed. Literally, I went down went down in the morning. There was nothing but piles of sand and, <laughs> and pallets full of pesco barriers. Went back that evening and the, was they were down. surrounded. The, the buildings were surrounded. So it was wonderful. Timing helped an awful lot speaking with with folks uh, they had more time to plan they had more time to get it done before the water was coming up and it, I think it makes a big difference not to be walking through water when you're trying to set up pescos um, they they uh, had some really good efforts both from the public works department uh, parks department supplied several folks down there and that their their ability to work together across departments is is tremendous. I don't know if anyone came over from sewer this time or not. Solid waste fields, some sandbags, so, public works. So, so, did our own thing. so, so solid waste, waste was involved too. Uh, so it's neat to see the, the different groups working together and, and uh, being a, an overall team. Um, very appreciative for that. And as it's been mentioned, we do want to get the names of the folks that don't want to say one name and not get all all right. of the names um, who've been involved we've got some folks who come when we have events like this happen uh, they they're there anytime that that we're do, doing something and and their help and assistance is greatly appreciated uh, reminder again it's already been mentioned multiple times city day uh, Saturday October 15 yeah uh, the one thing that I would put out there are you gonna be at the the park this time. Uh, you've got to take time to listen to Don. So make sure you take time to listen to Don. You will learn so much about how our sewer system works. It is phenomenal. And I'll be on the radio show this Wednesday. So. That was going to be my next question. Yes, that's it. Okay, uh, six days, fifteenth. Uh, uh, I, th I think that's it. The only other thing I want to say is uh, again, come visit us in beautiful. Uh, Beautiful historic Burlington. You can get married. Rob Sussman did. Can I get a motion? Move to adjourn. Second. Kathleen. Wilson? Aye. Davidson? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Scott? Yes. Thank you. Good night. Hey, Morgan.